remains a Category 1 typhoon this evening, Philippine time. At 9pm, November 29th, it had winds of 85 miles per hour, a pressure of 981 millibars. That's wind speeds near 140 kilometers per hour sustained. The storm still poses that same threat to Catanduanes. Potential landfall on December the 2nd could be a Category 4 storm when it gets there and a CDPS Stage 7 potentially catastrophic impacts if the storm does make landfall near that intensity with rainfall amounts possibly pushing 500 millimetres. Here's the storm's current position, 14.2 degrees north, 137.1 degrees east starting to move just a little bit quicker but still not particularly fast right now once it does shoot off towards the west that's probably when we'll see more intensification it's 840 miles from Tacloban right now 899 from Legazpi 935 from Naga 1078 from Batangas and 1080 from the capital Manila no warnings are in effect at this point the storm will enter the Philippine area of responsibility in about uh, 24 hours or less so at that point we may see some warnings putting into place from Pagasa but at the moment no warnings for any islands uh, or the Philippines so this is a projection of the rainfall estimates from the GFS model over the next seven days you can see the trend there the storm curving towards well sort of west southwest before turning further towards the west and then maybe a little bit west northwest on approach to landfall Potential landfall in Catanduanes, but there is a possibility it could miss it just to the north and then could go on to affect other parts of Luzon. Um, still the threat to the significant population centres, including Manila, that threat is very much there. Uh, by then it could still be a typhoon, but rainfall will probably be the biggest threat. Sea surface temperatures around 28 degrees Celsius all the way up until its potential landfall. Um, generally 28 maybe even pushing 29 in one or two areas so here is the GFS model forecast you can see how the wind field gets massive on the uh, northern side but the intensification phase only really begins by the end of the weekend if the GFS is to be believed um, the storm has been struggling quite a bit in the last 24 to 36 hours now staying as a category 1 storm although it is showing signs of intensification this evening so we could see some gradual intensification, but at some point there is still the possibility that Kamuri will rapidly intensify before it strikes the Philippines. Here are the chances of tropical storm force winds, which still steadily increase. This is over the next five days only. 79% of Virac, 66 at Naga, and 49% chance of tropical storm conditions now in Manila. And here's another look at what the models are saying. The JTWC now only calling for a Category 3 peak. HWRF still saying a Category 4. And the GFS from what we've seen uh, saying at least Category 3, possibly 4 as well. Wind shear is going to be fairly low, a moderate today and tomorrow, but falling in the next two days. So that will be interesting to see what happens there as we get towards Saturday. Sea surface temperature is very warm, relative humidity dropping a little bit, and track forecast there. Pretty much all models calling for a landfall somewhere on Luzon. So this is the um, the process of how the storm has been in the last six or seven hours or so, and you can see that it's still being affected by the looks of things by wind shear, uh, mainly on the eastern side there. But convection still blowing up massively. Look at those black colours there. That's well into the minus 80s in terms of cloud top temperatures, uh, but still no sign of the storm's eye yet. That will probably become more apparent at some point in the next 24 hours, but we'll wait and see. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com. You can also find our YouTube channel if you're not there already. You may well be. Good chance of that. Subscribe if you haven't. You can also find our Facebook page, search Force 13 all in text, and our Twitter handle, it's at Force 13 on there. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.